Welcome back everybody to the Dublin Shamrocks franchise here on Madden as we get ready to take on the next few games here in season number one with the Shamrocks. Last episode we picked up a win against the Arizona Cardinals in our first home game ever and we are currently 1-0 to start our first ever season as the Shamrocks. In his first game as quarterback for us, Jacoby Brissett didn't have a great day. We only threw the ball 11 times with him but he did have one touchdown and one interception. But the major storyline for us in the first game of the season was our rushing game. Brian Robinson Jr. had 141 yards and Antonio Gibson had 46 yards. So we're definitely going to try to lean into the running game the rest of the season with this team. That doesn't mean we're not looking to improve our passing game at all though. As we're going to be drafting a quarterback in this upcoming draft. And I'll be honest guys, this draft class isn't looking that great. Randy Hamilton, Chip McCain, the only two first round quarterbacks on the board. Everyone after that is round three or four projection or lower. So this is not a great quarterback draft class. That's a while down the road though, as we still have to get through this first full season with the Shamrocks. And we're going to be playing the moments here of the next few games as we're starting off with week two against the Denver Broncos. So we are going to play our very first drive here. And you know, we have to go right to the ground game as Brian Robinson Jr. is breaking off this big run. That's not good though. He He's going down with an injury. The very first play of the game, this is not what we need. Hopefully that injury isn't too serious as we're now going to turn to Antonio Gibson in the backfield. As thankfully, Brian Robinson only has the bruised quad and will return soon. So we're backed up to a third and eight here. First time passing the ball today. Jacoby Brissett is going to find Logan Thomas down to the 11. As that's what our offense is kind of going to be here this year. As Antonio Gibson is just short of the end zone. But we're really only going to pass the ball when we absolutely need to. And that's not good at all as we're losing one of our offensive linemen. So already this game off to a rough start for us injury wise. But we're scoring the first touchdown of the day on our first drive. So our defense would stop the Broncos on their first drive. And Brian Robinson Jr. is back in the game for us. So we have a chance to go up to Two possessions on this drive over the Broncos as he takes this to the outside and that's going to be another Shamrocks touchdown. Our defense is doing a great job today as they got another stop and it's all purely been through simulation as I haven't got to play a defensive moment yet. Third and six we're going to the air here across the middle. Ah that was a bad throw as soon as I threw it I knew that was a mistake. That one's not on Jacoby Brissett that's definitely on me. Somehow our defense comes up with a stop again we're backed up to a third and three here in the two minute drill which minus that interception which was my fault Jacoby Brissett has been having an amazing game for us so far somehow our defense has forced a turnover and we have another shot here at the end zone and yeah that's that's on me. Completely blew a shot at more points here before halftime. We should have played it safe. So two mistakes on my part. I'll take the blame for both of those interceptions, but we seem to be in pretty good standings right now, up 24 to seven. We get a turnover on downs here, but Denver is looking to score again here. Not a lot of time left in this game though, as that's gonna be a touchdown. I can't lie, that was a really good throw from Russell Wilson. They still need to recover this onside kick and they're down by two possessions. So barring a miracle for the Broncos it looks like we are going to end up winning this game as if we can pick up the first down here it will seal the deal for us and we can't but we can possibly seal the game here with a 57 yard field goal as the kick is up and it is good and your Dublin Shamrocks are going to pick up the week two win as we are now 2-0 to start our first season again not a horrible day from Jacoby Brissett 16 for 23 a touchdown and two interceptions which I'm not going to blame those on him that was my poor decision making a pretty solid Russian from the offense Brian Robinson jr. with 61 yards a touchdown three and a half a carry and Antonio Gibson 33 yards almost five yards a carry and one touchdown as well and after the game our star receiver Terry McLaurin is going to have an upgrade as he's now a 93 overall with a plus one to awareness catching traffic release plus two and change in direction and plus two to his deep route unfortunately Nick Gates our starting center has a torn labrum we saw him exit the game he will be out for four weeks and I'll be honest this sounds horrible but he might not have a job coming back off of injury because we have Ricky Stromberg who's the same overall as a rookie and a hidden development trait so we're probably gonna stick with Ricky the rest of the season we talked a little bit about our college prospects specifically the quarterback position to start the episode in the first mock draft is finally here available for us in week three as believe it or not they have us taking the very first quarterback of the entire draft at 
pick 26 quarterback Randy Hamilton from Virginia Tech. His current attributes show us he has an A on deep accuracy, an A on medium accuracy, and on his player notes says he has a beautiful spiral, stands tall in the pocket, and has great awareness, does well to avoid sacks. The vast majority of his success comes in the pocket. So based off of that, we can tell he's probably not a very fast mobile quarterback and much more of a stocky pocket passer. We'll definitely keep an eye on him as he's the only projected quarterback in the first round of this draft. Headed into week three, we got notified that Kendall Fuller, our starting quarterback, won NFC Defensive Player of the Week last week against the Broncos with five tackles and two interceptions. We definitely want to try to lock him up, but he doesn't seem keen on staying here as we're going to offer him a two-year $6.9 million deal, 8.8 .8 in total, and thankfully he's going to stick with Dublin. Next up, we definitely have to make sure we keep Chase Young here on the team. He's only 24 and we need to offer him a better contract next week. Cameron Curl, 83 overall, only 24 years old. Let's try this contract here as that's a good offer. He's back on the team for four more years. Curtis Samuel, again, is a player I want to keep around in our receiving core. He's only 27, so let's make him a three-year offer and it looks like he's going to walk. Just for security purposes, we're going to offer Cody Barden here a three-year, $2.4 million deal. He's going to accept and Antonio Gibson, I'm on the fence. I don't know if I want to offer him that or not. And this is a question I posed in the first episode. I don't know if we want to re-sign Antonio Gibson or not, but for only $8 million over two years, I think that's a great offer. So let's go ahead and make it to him. Almost enough to sign him. I think we might be able to get him on a two-year $9 million deal. Well, we're off to a hot start in our very first season, but this is going to be a tough week as we got the Buffalo Bills traveling to Dublin. Josh Allen and the Bills offense are driving on their very first possession today. And on first and goal, it looks like they're going to get in on the read option. So we're backed up to a third and nine here on our very first possession. We're going to the air and that was a bad decision into triple coverage. You guys are probably going to roast me in the comments. I don't know why my reads have been so bad this episode. A new rookie quarterback aren't going to change these interceptions I've been throwing as we don't get that one off in time. But there is going to be defensive passing interference so we're going to accept that. But already we're backed up to another third down here as, oh, I did not mean to throw that. That's not what I wanted. Oh my. I think single-handedly I am going to lose us this game with my passing. That's two opportunities we've had to score on drives now that we've thrown away. And now the Bills are in prime position to score as they'll go up by two possessions. All right, it is time to redeem myself here. Two minute drive and that's almost intercepted. Let's try to get Jacoby Brissett into a rhythm here, setting up a little short screen to Antonio Gibson as we'll get out of bounds. And that's kind of the momentum we need here. I've been trying to take two many deep shots as that's going to be intercepted guys I don't know what to say this is just a horrible performance on my part the bills are being gutsy here too as they're going for it on fourth and one they want a touchdown but do we get the stop yes we do our defense comes up clutch and saves me so now we have a chance at least to get in the field goal range to put some more points on the board as Jacoby Brissett avoids one sack but goes down baby steps guys you know we Picking up three yards instead of a sack, and what a catch. Jihad Dotson just absolutely lays out for this ball. And thanks to that, we have a fresh set of downs to work with, as why did I throw that hit as he throws? And that's our fourth interception of the game. Guys, what am I doing here? I know I said this game was going to be tough, but I didn't think it would be this tough, as we just need to get back at what we're good at, and that is running the football. First and goal, we'll give it to Brian Robinson up the middle. He's met immediately. Here's something we haven't tried yet as we'll go with the read option and that was the wrong read. I hate to do this with the game I've been having, but we're going to the air on third down and that's incomplete. And so we're going to have to just end up settling for three points in this position. Our defense thankfully got a stop though, so we're going to have another possession here to end the third quarter. A touchdown will get us right back into this game, but we need to pick up this first down and I am absolutely speechless, guys. That is five interceptions. Well, nothing else is really going to help, so we might as well keep throwing the ball here as that's going to be caught. First and 10 at the Buffalo 23. Brissett rolling out, and he can't get that off in time. A long second and 23. This might end up in an interception, I feel. We're just throwing it up, and yeah, that's, that's number six, guys. That's... 
I, I was just heaving at that point. What a tough game. That was pretty embarrassing. Not what our fans wanted to see here in Dublin, as we're going to lose this one 20-3 to the Bills. Kobe Brissett with a rough game today. Six interceptions to zero touchdowns. Not a great stat line at all. And we really seem to get away from the running game today, as we only had 100 yards total as a team, and I definitely think that factored into this loss. But you know what? It's a new week. We got to forget about that game and focus on this week. Now. And to start this week, we got to go back to the negotiation table with Chase Young as we're going to give him a very player friendly offer here. And we just locked up Chase Young for the future. We also got to go after Montez Sweat as I would like to keep him on the team as well. And let's see if this deal gets it done and he is going to resign. Finally, we got Antonio Gibson. We were so close last time. We're going to go for two years, $9 million. Let's see if he takes it. And that's enough to get him back on the team. Other than those players, I'm not too keen on really signing anyone left left on this list, so I think we're good for re-signing. So there's currently a three-way tie for the NFC East after our loss last week. We're sitting at 2-1, and one, but we got a very tough matchup again this week as we're finally starting division play, and we're taking on the 2-1 and one Philadelphia Eagles. So we learned our mistake from last game, and that's not getting away from the run game, as that's what we're going to focus on today. But of course, that leaves us with an injured Antonio Gibson now. First and 10, this drive is looking promising, as we are now inside the five. And I didn't realize Brian Robinson Jr. also went out with an injury, but I guess he should be back in the game very soon here. Until then, it's Jared Patterson in the backfield running the ball for us. As now we're going to our fourth string running back, Chris Rodriguez Jr., and he'll get the touchdown. And the Shamrocks will tie it up at seven apiece here. Another positive looking offensive drive here is we're going to set up a halfback screen and pick up the first down, but there is a flag. But it's going to be roughing the passer. So that sets us up with a first and 10 from their 14 yard line. And Jarrett Patterson is still in the game for us. I don't know when Brian Robinson will return, but Patterson seems to be having no trouble filling in that role for us at all. Now that we have our defensive line locked up on long-term deals, let's see if they can perform for us as we're not going to get the stop here. And what tackle was that? I mean, look at this tackle. Buddy just threw his arms up in the air. First and goal now for Philly. Let's see if we can get a stop and hold them to a field goal as that's going to be incomplete. Second and goal now, less than a minute to go to the end zone and another bad throw. We just need one. One more stop like that here, and we're not going to get it. Philadelphia is going to tie this up at 14 apiece. Jacoby Brissett, though, seemed to get our offense down the field quickly, and we'll be able to get a field goal right before halftime. And after scoring on our opening possession of the second half, we have a chance to go up even more over the Eagles as we're up by 10 and we're still driving as Antonio Gibson fighting his way forward. And we're now down to the 10 yard line of Philadelphia. So we have a third and seven now. We're gonna play this one safe as we're gonna set up the halfback screen and it's gonna work. That's almost a touchdown. Fourth and inches, we're going with the quarterback sneak and they stop it. I can't believe it, they stopped the quarterback sneak. Well, it looks like it's our turn to try and get a fourth down stop here as the Eagles are going for it. Jalen Hurts back to throw, he has Devontae Smith wide open. Philly would end up going down and scoring on that drive as now we have to get a stop to try and win this game. And do not ask me how DeAndre Swift managed to turn that into a three yard gain last play. Big third and seven. We need to stop here. Hurts back to throw. He's rolling out. He's throwing it up into double coverage and it's knocked down as the Eagles are going to send out their punting unit and we will force a three and out. This is what this team was made for to run the ball and run out the clock. The Eagles have started calling their timeouts. We're going to need to pick up this first down here. Third and two, and Antonio Gibson does so. Billy only has one timeout left here, and they're going to use it. All we need to do now is pick up one more first down this drive. As on third and six, we're going to give it off to Terry McLaurin, and he picks up the first down. A clutch play by our star receiver as we'll come out and take a knee. And the Shamrocks will improve to 3-1 and one on the season as we pick up the 24-21 to 21 win over the Eagles. A very much improved game for Jacoby Brissett. 282 yards and a touchdown. And Antonio Gibson carrying the team today with 63 yards, averaging 4.5 per carry. The only thing I'm still confused about, though, is why Brian Robinson wasn't in the game at all. And this is why 
why it says he has a hit pointer and is out for one week where it said in the game he was ready to play so I'm assuming he's going to be in the starting lineup this coming week and our defensive coordinator Adam Rogers said he was very impressed with the way Montez Sweat performed last week against the Eagles and so if we can hold the Bears to less than 75 rushing yards and one rushing touchdown or get Montez Sweat two interceptions force fumbles tackles for losses or sacks he's going to get a development trait upgrade so let's try to do that in this game against the Bears. So it is good to see that Brian Robinson is back in the game for us, even though we're not starting off the greatest with him. As already, we're faced with a third and seven here. Jacoby Brissett is going to dump that down to Terry McLaurin, and that's going to be short. So we will end up having to punt on our first drive today. Justin Fields, the most overrated Chicago quarterback of all time. As we do have a chance to force a third down stop, he's rolling out. Can't read the defense as usual, and that is a sack for the Shamrocks defense. So it didn't work too well for us on the first drive, but I don't want to give up on the running game here today as we have definitely seen what happens when we try to get away from the running game and it is not good results for us at all nearing the end of the first quarter third and one trying to keep this drive alive and we're gonna be short but you know what I want to risk it I want to go for it here on fourth down and we're gonna fumble and the Bears get it I think we would have been short anyway so does it really matter thankfully we have a chance to get a stop here on third and nine and again bad throw from fields they are gonna send the field goal unit out though and it's a fake what what are the Bears doing? I have no idea why they thought that was going to work or why they should do that. But hey, that's that's Chicago Bears football for you. All right, third and three. One of us needs to finally score. Here's Brian Robinson fighting for the first down, and he's short. But again, one of us needs to finally score, so we're going to go for it here on fourth down and get it. As we have a first in goal to go from the Chicago Bears, eight, giving it to Brian Robinson. That didn't seem to go anywhere for us, so we're going to try again up the middle. Picked up a few more yards, but we're actually going to try throwing it here as we don't get it off in time. That's it's almost intercepted. We had a guy open, just couldn't get it to him, so we're gonna have to settle for a field goal here, but hey, we're on the board. Right around midfield, we have a chance to score here again before halftime. We're just gonna play it safe, though. We fumble, and the Bears recover. I guess that's not playing it safe. I was just hoping I could step up and slide with Jacoby Brissett but instead the Bears get the ball, and I know they're going for it again here because they only have you play the moments, and wow, why? I literally said they were going for it, and I still sent everyone. I thought they were going to run it. Hope may not be lost, though, because Jacoby Brissett is actually getting us down the field here as Terry McLaurin holds on to that. And we are at least in field goal range after that. Again, we're just going to try to play it safe here and slide. We have two timeouts. Again, let's play it safe here and go to the run game as Antonio Gibson takes it in. And your Dublin Shamrocks will take the lead back over the Bears. Don't ask me how, but they managed to tie it up before halftime. That is insane. But thankfully, we're gonna stop to start the second half not looking good for us though as the Bears are back in scoring range but a bad throw from Justin Fields would force them to settle for a field goal third and five here we're actually going to the air we're going to roll out pressure coming just throw it away throw it away throw it away that could have been very bad but thankfully we'll still take three points so we're up by seven now just over three minutes to go in the game and the Bears have the ball we need to try and get a defensive stop this drive against them as the Bears offense now just shy of midfield Justin Fields dropping back and he's going to run because that's all he knows how to do and that'll bring us to the two minute warning with a seven point lead we've already failed our goal of holding them to 25 rushing yards as we almost had a chance for a sack there but won't get it as the clock is ticking here for Fields and the Bears offense thankfully that catch is gonna go under review as he definitely did not have both feet in bounds there take a look at this there's one and second is out of bounds. They're up holding that? There's no way they just got both feet in bounds and called that. Whatever. First down, Bears. Why they're running no huddle right now? and not using a timeout. It's running so much time off the clock, but hey, it's working, I guess. Justin Fields thinks he's a bad man because he's thrown for over 100 yards. Second and four, we need a stop here. Payne gets into the backfield. Can't get to Justin Fields in time, though. Now they only have one timeout left to use. Fields back to throw. Oh, we almost had a sack there. But time is ticking for the Bears. 23 seconds and counting. Fields in the shotgun. Dropping back to throw. He's looking. He's hit for a loss. The Bears used their last timeout. It's a third and 14 18 seconds left fields back to throw 
Pressure coming, he throws it away. This play right here is for the game. We're bringing the double safety blitz. We know Fields can't handle it. He throws in a double coverage and that's an interception. We had both safeties blitzing and he still couldn't read that defense. What a way to win in front of the home crowd. As we're gonna take this one over the Bears, 20 to 13. Jacoby Brissett actually had a really good game again. 235 yards, one touchdown and an interception. And Brian Robinson had a great game back from injury. 90 yards on 20. 23 carries averaging just shy of four yards. So apparently we actually met our goal with Montez Sweat this week against the Bears as he is now going to upgrade his dev trait to superstar. So from that we're going to get an attribute upgrade to Montez Sweat and he's now in 83 overall. Brian Robinson Jr. also got an attribute upgrade after that game and that would bring him up to an 80 overall. So we were looking pretty good headed into our week six game as we were currently sitting at the top of our division at four and one. That's where we're gonna end off this episode and pick up next episode as we look to see if we can keep up our winning ways with the Dublin Shamrocks.